perfectly on time. So, good uh, afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. It's really a delight uh, to have with us today um, the Heritage Protection Coordinator from ICOM, Elsa Ortiz Verea, and she will be sharing with us her experience uh, because she just returned from Beirut and we're looking forward, I'm sure not only me, but uh, all our you know, audiences, people interested in museums, for UMAC members, ICOM members, everyone is looking forward to hear what you have to say, Elsa. So thank, thank you. you so much. For thank being you for here. the invitation. Thank you so much. And the first thing I would like to, so that people know who you are and so on, is that you, if you can share with us, introduce yourself. What is your background training? What do you do in ICOM precisely? What is the, your job? What is your typical day uh, so that people can, you know, map you sort of? Sure. So I come from the, the museum community. I used to work in museums in France mainly. And then I've been uh, trained specially for cultural heritage protection uh, and cultural uh, project for development. So I worked first at UNESCO. I was working for the convention, the Hague Convention, 54 Convention, as it's called for the protection of cultural heritage in case of armed conflict. Uh, and then I joined the ICOM Secretariat um, and I'm working under the Department of Cultural Heritage Protection and Capacity Building. And uh, we have two main missions, which is uh, cultural heritage protection in endangered zones and um, to fight against illicit traffic. So mainly my job is to design and implement projects for the protection of uh, movable cultural heritage in various countries, including emergency preparedness and response in museums. And then the second part is to uh, coordinate the department projects and programs, including the, the red lists uh, of mm -hmm. cultural uh, property at risk uh, and disaster risk management. We also coordinate with other committees we can talk later the yeah. disaster risk management. Yeah, t t tell us, about, because maybe people don't know what is the red list and it's such an important tool. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the red list. What is it? What is the scope? Sure. Tell us so it's mainly, it's done, so it's a tool and it's a list of uh, endangered uh, cultural property. It's done either by countries or uh, by region uh, for objects that are uh, under threat of being uh, trafficked. So it's mostly in war zones, but war we also war. have, yeah, we also have one for, for China, for Latin America, for countries that are, we know that objects are in the international market yeah. and has to be protected. Yeah, so most people don't know, but we as museum professionals, we are forbidden by the ethics code of ICOM yeah, and most uh, ethics, co uh, ethics uh, codes everywhere to incorporate in the collections, for example, items that come from zones actually uh, currently at war. And so that's because it's considered that the state of law is suspended. So there is no proper documentation, no proper provenance. And so what the red list does is really list everything that is in danger so that uh, you know the world knows the police knows the authorities exactly. know the government knows and the museums know exactly so we are working with museums to to do that list and then uh, we we are working in collaboration with interpol and the world custom organizations um, to spread those lists at the customs mostly and then doing also a quite important lobbying part with action houses, museums, people on the ground to stop as much yeah. as we can the traffic. Yeah, because, you know, uh, cultural heritage cannot be just like that trafficked, you know, if it's exactly. in a museum, it belongs to the public, you know, so it cannot be, so it's very good that this tool exists. We'll provide links in the description below after the, our conversation. Great. And it's very important that people are aware, societies are aware, mm. uh, and buyers, you know, Absolutely. are aware yeah. and museums are aware. 
Okay, so That's let's good. dig in into Beirut, if you can. We sure. are very much excited to know. So when were you in Beirut and uh, what were the objectives of your visit? Tell us. So I arrived uh, next Saturday in Beirut and last. I left last Saturday. Last Saturday. And I left yesterday. Uh, so what happened is that when we heard that museums were um, affected by the explosion, thanks to you, thanks to our incredible network, uh, Peter Keller, the Director General and our President, Alberto Garlandini, decided that it was very important uh, to be next to ICOM Lebanon and the museum community as fast as possible. Yes. Uh, the decision was also taken after a protocol for emergency action that we wrote alongside with uh, our standing committee for disaster risk management, uh, chaired by Anna Pennock, and the new international committee for disaster resilient museums that have been um, created in Kyoto. Um, right a few months ago uh, to coordinate our actions. So one of the first step of that protocol was to be on the ground, to be able to see the situation and to meet people on the ground. And I think we all think that it's very important to be, to be alongside with them and to see how we can help. Yeah. Uh, it's it's this, always better than... So this, this tragedy, it's the awful, outrageous explosion in Beirut, ICOM, the International Council of Museums, put it in a top priority in terms of First uh, priority, the, absolutely, with local absolutely. authorities and with them. that's very good. Yeah, of exactly. Course. Of course, exactly. And so uh, well, you arrived on Saturday. So the explosion was on the fourth. I think that was Tuesday. Exactly. And so you arrived on the eighth. On the eighth. And so you stayed Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, so basically yeah. five days. Wednesday was when you returned, so not much done there. But mm. can you share with us what, you, well, first, before you go into the job, tell us your fir personally, your first impressions of the city when you arrived there, you know, and you um, find a city that was barely waking up from this terrible tragedy. How, mm -hmm. how did you, what were your first impressions? Uh, it's it's terrifying. It's very it's very impressive. It's very sad, of course. And my first view of the city, I was quite far from the explosion, of course, because it was not easy to be in the main center. Was it cordoned off? Was it uh, was it cordoned off the, the 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 part of the disaster? You could not go there. Is yeah, it, exactly. It's it's locked. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was staying quite far from the explosion, a few kilometers away. But still, when I arrived, I saw in the streets all the shards of glass everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, and I saw the mess in the street. And I was not in a I was not next to the port, so that's how strong it was. So that was very impressive. Um, and then I saw a bit the city. Um, it's a devastating landscape, honestly. We talk about like eight thousand uh, buildings affected in the city. Uh, out of which I think it's like more than 600 historical buildings and a, a few, I yeah. No idea of yeah. the scale of the historic buildings. And we, we think that there that is... means classified or listed as heritage. Historical buildings, absolutely. Historical buildings. Yeah. And 60 of them apparently um, uh, could collapse. So it needs an immediate action. Immediate action. Immediate action for the buildings of course but also for for the for, for people in the streets i mean that's of course extremely of course. dangerous of course so and was yeah. it your first time in beirut unfortunately it was uh, i hope it won't be the last though yeah no. yes it was so we don't want you to be the last we want you mm. to go there continue doing your work uh, mm. uh so so let's and uh, let's understand what you did when you arrived there so which institutions so, did you contact? What were your, uh, you know, the partners that you looked in the, what were the people that you looked in mm -hmm. the terrain? Tell us a little bit more what you did during sure. those five days. So first I had the most welcoming uh, uh, mission ever. Um, I, so I contacted Suzy Akimian, which is the chair of ICOM Lebanon. And she organized for me all the visits and all the meetings with all the directors of museums. 
um, we arrived, we had a first meeting, just the two of them to, to talk about the situation. And I come Lebanon and how it was coordinating on the ground. Yeah. And then I visited the archaeological museums of the American University of Beirut. Mm -hmm. And I saw Nadine Panayo, the director. We made a quick visit. Uh, I saw that the doors and the windows were completely blown up by the explosion. Uh, there is a few damage in the collection, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they are all very it's crazy working day and night to protect their museums um, to to damage as much as possible to have an idea of the needs financially but also humanly um, that was the first visit then i've been to the musée de la préhistoire libanaise that's also a university museum absolutely it's saint joseph university uh, with maya bustani the director uh, there is a glass ceiling that is about to collapse, probably. There is a wall to be, uh, to be enhanced, reinforced. Uh, the, luckily, the collection has not been damaged, yeah. uh, but the building is, uh, is very affected. Yeah. So, same, there is an immediate work to be undertaken. And the, the University of Saint Joseph, the collections and museums are closer to the impact, the epicenter, so to speak, absolutely of the explosion than the other university, the, the other important university, exactly. the American University of Beirut. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The prehistorical museum is very, very close. The, the, that campus of the university is very, very close from the, the explosion. Yeah. And uh, the whole building is very affected, actually. And there is also, I won't talk for our partners, IFLA and, and so on, but I know that the, the library is very affected as well. Yes. Yeah. Do you know if there's a movement similar to the one of ICOM towards the protection and rehabilitation of libraries and archives? You know, are you aware of a movement on the locally also? Yeah, absolutely. So there is yeah. IFLA for the libraries and yeah. ICA for yeah. archives so that's very mobilized as well. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And they yeah, are yeah. also aware and uh, you absolutely know, mobilized. And in touch them with them, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Because the manuscripts, oh my God, and yeah. the books, they're absolutely incredible. I should yeah. probably also get in touch with them because there's university libraries and the university archives. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'll probably get in touch with them too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they, yeah. Uh, and we, when I arrived at the, the university, we didn't know yet the damages because they needed to, to clear up a bit the crime scene, if you can say so. So they had no idea yet of like how damaged the collection was, but it's quite, the, the building is so affected that I think that the collection might be as well. Yeah, because there's the level of the buildings and then there's the level of everything that was smashed in the vitri, everything. everything exactly. Everything was glass within that radius, you know, exactly. was totally scattered, you know, totally shattered, so. Exactly. One of the, one of these days, I don't know when was it. I think like two days ago, I woke up thinking about you know my 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 concern. I'm in a scientific museum, and so I imagined barometers and thermometers with mercury. Mm -hmm. They must have exploded too, you know, from old collections. You know, yeah. I, I thought I woke up. Oh my God, glass! Yeah, true. if everything was shattered. It must be incredible. And yeah, so, yeah. but but at the same time, what was the spirit that you found of the people? Highly depressed, motivated, frustrated, or what? What what, what was the, the feeling that you got from there is Eshima? there is a, yeah, there is there is sadness and 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 uh, but they are very motivated, yeah, incredibly devoted and yeah. and very much um willing to do as much as they can for their museums and their collection. And there is, they've been, of course, working day and night since, since day one yeah. to protect and to, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible, actually, how yeah. devoted they are all. Yeah, and uh, which brings us to our task for incredible task force of UMAC, task force. Exactly, of, yes, yes. In Beirut, which is absolutely, incredible we will we will provide links to to everything you know all the museums so that you can are aware which are and if you want to find more information you can always mm. uh, find but at the same time 
I'm so proud of the way that we, uh, that you Mac managed to have, it never happened, you know, before, to have somebody on the terrain, first of all, so competent, so motivated, so responsive, uh, which is our task force of, um, you know. Um, Absolutely, and I had, Solar. thanks to you, I, I, I was able to meet them yeah. Uh, and it was absolutely incredible. We can talk maybe later. Yeah, maybe we'll later. Yeah. 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 Give yeah. us a still a macro picture of the... So there's the, 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 the problem of the buildings, of course, that's a, a level of intervention. Then there's the problem of the collections and all the exactly. graphic equipment, you know, like display cases and so on. And there's different degrees of damage according to naturally the distance to the epicenter. Mm. And in terms of university museums, uh, there are two universities. So the university, the American University of Beirut and also mm -hmm. the Université de Saint-Joseph. And we're still assessing um, the damages and so on. So yeah. um, how is the international effort going to be organized? Well, of course, it's very early, you know, and you know, the different institutions. Yeah. There's local level, there's the international level, but I'm sure that you, with your experience, can share with us uh, what are your, well, first of all, what is the plan, next steps, you know, mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. you're in Paris, but what's going to happen? Will you go back? When will you go back? And what kind of, you know, movements, are, mobilizations are being prepared? And yeah, uh, yeah tell us a little bit about the international effort? Um, yes, so we have, um, do you know Blue Shield International? They have a Lebanese uh, National Committee. Tell us, tell us what is Blue Shield, because I think Blue that's Shield, important. Blue Shield has been created. There is four funders for Blue Shield, and it's ICOM, ICA, IFLA, and ICOMOS. Okay, so, so that's the thing library, that brings Archives everyone. Okay, so that's the institution, the kind of the institution that brings everyone together. Exactly. All cultural heritage, buildings, manuscripts, okay. uh, books, and museum collections, right? Exactly. Exactly. So we are called the funding force, for yeah. funding for of of Blue Shield International. Blue Shield International has national committees as as I come. So there is a Lebanese. Um, the National Committee, and um, they are doing an assessment that uh, putting together uh, all the institutions affected to have kind of an overview of damages. And then they'll try to, to coordinate the first aid. And that's the end of their mandate, but to ensure the security, that will be the first thing. Right. We, can't, we can't restore in two days all the glasses collapsed and, and so on, but we can put plastic where it's needed, we can of course. put woods in, instead of doors. There is an immediate action, organized. there is immediate action to prevent, um, you know, theft um, and collapse and stuff like that. Exactly. And so, and that's the domain, the scope of action of, of Blue, Blue Shield, Shield through yeah. Blue Shield Lebanon, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the main thing. Then, then all, all the international organizations related to cultural heritage are um, coordinating uh, to see how we can, yeah. we can do it the right way, uh, who will be on the ground to help. Yeah. Uh, what's, but we need a little bit of time to assess the needs. Of course, of course. And then there's the second part, which we will probably have more conversations like this throughout the, you know, the next the upcoming months and years, because it's going to mm -hmm. take a long time. Yeah. But um, that recovery effort will not be managed by Blue Shield. That's what you're saying, right? That's yeah, a different absolutely. thing. That, that will be the first security actions to be taken. That's their mandate. Right, right. Yeah. And we are, we, UMAC, we are in uh, part of that um, coalition, I don't know what's the, yeah, the best absolutely. term for yeah, it, yeah. that is yeah. being organized through Blue Shield to Lebanon. So there's, there are more institutions there. Could you present them briefly? Yeah, so of course, when I talk about ICOM, it, it's, it's UMAC, yeah. of course, and it's, it's ICOM Lebanon. ICOM Lebanon. We'll just, yeah, 
the main name, but you you are the ones uh, really mobilized on the ground. Yeah. So I met, thanks to you, to the UMAC task force, uh, and they are wonderful. They're doing an amazing job. They are organized and they mobilized themselves immediately after the explosion. And they so are- So we're talking about, let's introduce their, their names. Let's, yeah. tell, let's, let's tell people about them because we're so of uh, proud of them. They're so brave and motivated and, you know, passionate. So there's basically three architects, right? So yes. uh, uh, Gilbert Nicolas, he has, I will also put a link here to a video I did with him um, like one week ago or so. Then there is um, David, David yeah. Shalala. I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the names uh, correctly. And there's Elsie Sayeg, right? So there are the yes, three, exactly. the task force is these three, but then they have enlarged because three people cannot do anything, right? For the cleanup and to help and assess. They have managed like in five days to enlarge their team, their yeah, first responders than, yeah, team. Yeah. To in less incredible. than five days, they mobilized like almost 50 volunteers. I know. Uh, from the museum community, I mean, professionals yeah. uh, willing to help museums. It's uh, absolutely incredible. So from incredible. civil engineers to conservators, architects, to curators, absolutely. architects, exactly. uh, museographers, um, also the, you know, the, the, bra the breadth of disciplines is incredible. And so yes. they will be part <clears throat> of this first respond Blue Shield coalition that exactly. will help and actually, they are doing an essential job, which is um, they are they will help museums to assess the damages. And when you have a wall that might collapse, you need an architect to say yes, it needs to be reinforced, it needs to be rebuilt in it. And and museum director cannot no. that, that yeah. on on their That's way. Right. I mean, they need professionals, they need that expertise. So, and it's really important to have them right now on the ground. And I've been amazed really by their efficiency, their devotion, their professionalism. Yeah. And I think they'll be really the key thing on the ground. Yeah. I think in a way that they mirror uh, the Lebanese society, in particular the community of the city of Beirut, because That's they, very true. Uh, they, you know, they're all, they've been so, they've been suffering so much uh, all these years and decades. And yes. a, yet, a, yet another blow, you know, for for their quality of life, for their normal, you know, just mere having a normal life, you know. So this was yes. so yes. impactful that I think that the whole society is motivated. Actually, uh, yes, it, that's very true. And actually, you see in the streets, uh, the civil society, they, yeah. they are the one cleaning the streets, yes, helping each that. other. Yeah. Yeah, That's I how was so, they I was so everything. impressed. Yeah, yeah. Taking huge risks, you know, of course. being on the, yeah. Yeah, there's the yeah, matter. And the they do this regardless of politics or regardless of religion. So there's this, you know, this exactly. collective sense of responsibility towards the common good and particularly cultural heritage mm -hmm. that I find in, incredibly touching, you know, from the conversations I've been having with them. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I've been also visiting other museums, such as the National Museums, um, yeah. uh, the Sursak Museums, and I've been really amazed by the quality of their collections. I mean, it's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, that, that the history of the country, of course, that we Absolutely. all know that it's... You know, it's at the crossroads, at the crossroads, yeah. Yeah. east and west, you know, it's just... Fantastic, long yeah. history. Cascade of history, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, the next, did you, do we, okay, so the next steps is more or less like getting this first action, first phase mm. of assessing, securing, and then there will be a second, longer stage of reconstruction. Yes. Is there a possibility, because as you might share, I've been getting some messages from our members um, and also other interested people who, is there, is, there, is there going to be the possibility of people making donations 
Is there going to be a bank account with it? People, sometimes they don't know how to help, but they want to, you know, make a donation, a cash donation, but that goes through, you know, the proper channels, legitimate, cha legitimate channels that we are sure that it goes directly to what matters, which is the reconstruction of cultural heritage. Do you think that there's going to be the possibility of that happening anytime soon? Yeah, hopefully. That, that's one thing we are trying to implement as well. It's to find the right, the right channel and the most transparent system to help yes. um, and to have the money going straight to the museums uh, in needs. So that's why we are trying to figure out uh, how to do it. But hopefully we'll have an operator on the ground able right. to manage money. And it's that that's also amazing that all the people, museums and even private people willing to help. Uh, that's great. We also, they, they've been, the, the UMAC task force have been in contact with the British museums. I know that the Sursak Museum was in, in contact with the Centre Pompidou it's in Paris. True. The British it's, Museum, it's, the British yeah. Museum, for example, was immediately, I like, in our, within hours, yeah. we got a, a contact from James Fraser and from yes. the British Museum. So there are many museums who also want to help and all that energy and expertise needs to be channeled through the proper... Exactly, we need to coordinate the, the, yeah. the actions yeah. and, the, and the help. Yeah, absolutely. But hopefully we'll, we'll get there, yes. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. It's, it's been, it's been, it's, it's been re very recent, but at the same time for security, it needs to be quick now, huh? right? Exactly, so, that yeah. will be the first answer, but then it's really important to keep in mind that it will be a long-term long uh, project. So that's very important, and it's let let's continue talk about it. Not not it's more like the a case in in two yeah. months. You know, it will be very long. Exactly. Let's uh, let's keep it in the you know in the echoing in the minds of people, uh, so that we can because sometimes what happens with these reconstruction efforts is that you know okay there's like oh everyone overwhelmed and uh, everyone wanted to contribute, but then there's a curve, uh, you know. Uh, declining curve of interest because it stops being in the news and so on. So we need, and this takes long time, cultural heritage, also the reconstruction of the city. But anyway, we really need to keep this in the eye of the media, of our community, the cultural heritage community. We need to do that. So I'm all already grateful for all the conversations we will have yes, in this too. channel or other, it's a pleasure. What are your main fears? Okay, so there will be challenges. At this point, what, do you, what are your main you know, fears of challenge? What, what are the, 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 the most? Uh... Well, the, I think the, the, the biggest challenge will be to find, as we, we said, an NGO on the ground that will be coordinating the funds. Because as we know, there is a lot of banking restrictions Right. And it's very complicated just to spend money on the ground. So that, that's the, third, the main issue. The second one will be to provide help. It means that we have to figure out what can be um, um, coming from Lebanon, such as yeah. windows, glasses. Is it yeah. possible? How much it will cost? Or do we have to go through another country? But then, as we know, there is no port anymore. Yeah. borders are complicated so that will be that organization to find the best way to to do it um i think that will be the main challenges so basically trying to organize everything through a single channel locally and also mm -hmm. the logistics of all the operation right so that's exactly. that's complicated okay exactly. and what would be i mean now what would be what would re you really want to happen um, so with, what are your wishes for the cultural heritage of lebanon after this terrible disaster in yeah, i don't well, know five years ten years whatever i hope that we'll be able to coordinate that very closely to other main institutions and then to see to see the cultural heritage rise from from the ashes and be even even stronger um, that it used to be, um, and a real concern for the whole international community. I think that's very, that, that will be very important. And to keep in mind, as we said, that that will be a long-term project. So to still be here 
alongside with them uh, in the following years. And in the middle of a pandemic, because we, we hardly ever yeah, talk about it, you know, but it's a, it's a present, it's a heavy presence in all these discussions that we're having. It's just, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's Yeah, it's, 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 of, it's, it's, a, it's a war zone. They are in an economical crisis, political crisis, and yeah. the pandemic. And the pandemic, I mean, yeah. So our friends Lebanese need all the help that we yes. can provide them and all the assistance through many ways. I mean, each one of us knows how to, you know, put his or her expertise to the, to the service, uh, whether yes. it is by keeping the thing visible and yes. in the news. Uh, whether it is by cash, whether it is by expertise, museum expertise, exactly. and, and so on. So we just we need to do that to, to keep. Uh, yes, because thanks to to our network, uh, and you know that better than me, we can really, as the UMAC task force, the UMAC task force, the, you in your community and university museums, you have, yeah. I'm sure, a lot of experts willing to help as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll have to yeah mobilize all the network. It's not, it's not just money yeah. we're talking yeah. about. No, of course not. No, of course not. Sometimes it's not mm. even money. It's, uh, exactly. The money doesn't, doesn't cover. It's mm. really the expertise and uh, advice and assistance and so on. Exactly. So I don't know if there's anything that you'd like to share with us, anything else? From... No, we'd just like to, to thank you for uh, supporting us as well on the ground. It's the uh, only thing I can do. I'm not there in Beirut. It's the only thing I can do is, you know, provide yeah, next time. <laughs> yeah, but that's my... huge. You see, even even being far away, you're you're able to to be a great help. Yeah, it's really um, our so job. We really yeah. like to to thank you. That's that's yeah. amazing, and to see how strong the ICOM network can be as well. Yeah, thank you so much, and um, we do our best, you know, to provide the network because that's where our strength, you know, and in fact, ICOM. Exactly because yeah. ICOMS is amazing in that respect. It has an incredible network everywhere in the world. There's people, Absolutely. there's museum professionals affiliated that uh, you know follow the guidelines and uh, orientations yeah. and the ethics. And uh, so we're all united by this common, that's yes. what it is to be part of a network. So we're exactly. here and, um, yeah, and I'm and really- Yeah, I come Lebanon, we really yeah. need to- Yeah. Yeah, be very close right. to them to help them exactly exactly so that's it i'm mindful now we are already yeah almost one hour online which is time flies i know yeah yeah but we will have more of these conversations so what are you going to do uh, next week i don't know we are we will uh, coordinate with uh icrom if like as well see what the blue shield is able to yes. do on the ground yeah. uh keep in touch with museums to know and, and the UMAC task force to see if they are um, they have more idea on the needs yeah. and the first action to be taken yeah. and then yeah we'll try to raise money to have a safe and transparent way to dispatch uh, human and, and help uh, on the ground that will be the next actions absolutely and we will provide as much information as we can as soon as we have it either here on YouTube or other you know, social networks through ICOM, you also should follow ICOM social networks so that you are updated by what's happening and how things develop. And thank you so much, Elsa. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Thank you, ICOM, for uh, you know, giving us the pleasure of uh, talking to Elsa. And uh, we wish you all the best in your work personally and also for the coalition of which uh, we're really proud to be part of. And let's yeah. hope the best and I'm sure everything will be uh, much better than it is now, though, definitely. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. And with the help of- We'll everybody. do our best, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very okay. much and talk to you very Thank soon. You so Thank you so much. Thank you.